All right, welcome back. If you just join us, you're in time for our very first interview for the Ogbonge Good Morning Niger show. And we get to get Mukhtar Hali Lumodibo in the online to join us. Now we could discuss this uh, transparency international matter on top of uh, Nigeria corruption perception index. And I'm going to say, uh, when we talk about this story on Monday, Mogagai uh, Bashe will come out talk say that reports that Nigerians in the index, the corruption that they refer to the Buhari government. Um, make we look this report really um, understand what in they talk um, and what we supposed to do to go forward. The person will say, duh, no way to stop the corruption that we're supposed to do to go mm -hmm. forward. But is it that easy? Um, Oga Mukhtar, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. So you joined us for our show this morning. Oga, there were inside studio here with me as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask certain questions on the matter. Uh, make we, of course, go straight to the matter when they ground. So, and a Nigeria position for this corruption perception index not be today um our report never good um at all what do you feel about the report when come out uh, recently and the reaction when follow that report all right um one of the first thing you need to understand is we are in nigeria and then sometimes we we had issues around snakes swallowing money monkey also eats money and stops and um, I bet you this, if you would swallow, sl slaughter that monkey or something, you will not find the money in it. So the point is, Transparency International Index uh, 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 report is nothing but the reflection of the truth of what has been happening in this country. If you go from the legal aspect, we have freedom of information law in this country, but no state has accepted that uh, uh, the law is applicable in their state for them to domesticate it for information to have flaw between government and people. So there is lack of trust from government to people and then from people to government. So no flow of information. The only thing we're fighting is, is fake news and then misinformation. The information is not out there. So the point is, the report is nothing but the truth. All right. If you believe the report are nothing but the truth, um, and they were begging me could have borrowed me this one. Um, why you feel say governments they always they very quick to, to rise to their own defense? I mm. mean, you hear it on Gagarbashe who talk, and Gagarbashe will be mouthpiece of the presidency. Uh, in talk say that report. Say they're not referred to the corruption when they Ogabuari government. Mm -mm. So help us understand which criteria Transparency International they take uh, to put about this perception index. Then they enter the ordinary market, they see where touts, they collect money from bus driver, or then they look at based on um, you know administration for country. How easy governance day and waiting governance they entail for that country. Mm -hmm. All right. One of the first things they look at is around. Um, Governance one, one it's, it has to do with governance spendings, that's government spending, mm -hmm. and then um, the political will and priority around, around certain point of uh, 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 governance. Okay. One, education, health, you know, employment, and, and issues of economy. Now, if I will take us back to 2000, from 2000 to this moment, we've never had our budget on education go above 15%. And then there is a benchmark by UNESCO around 2000 that says a country should have 15% of its budget go to education. There is an AU benchmark, that's African Union, that says each and every country in Africa should have its budget from 10 to 15 percent goes to hell. We've never had that. Then look at the joblessness or, or, or jobless rates in the country and then compare the economic recession that we've been in for the past couple of months. I think uh, the third quarter of 2020 that's when we entered recession. And that recession is one of the worst recession we've entered in years. So that should give you the perception of what Transparency International is looking at uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to that. In Nigeria, I want you to know that 
there is a governor that appointed a person, allocate salary to him, and they call him special advisor on graveyard. Now tell me wow. how, how can we move? Wow. You understand? So special so advisor on graveyard. Yes, okay. there is a special advisor on graveyard in this country. So if you look at the things that is happening, the, the, the issue of the young people in Nigeria that are not employed, you understand, look at the rate, look at the cost of governance in the country, the numbers of advisors our governors have, the numbers of advisors the president have. I am not sitting down here to say they should not be advisors, they should, but they should be something constructively that something that can can, can benefit the people mm -hmm. then if you look at the the issues of information participatory budgeting but the budget we do in this country is not the reflection of what people really want some communities are need are in need of in school and they are being given water mm. yes they need water but what they need is school so give them what they need. But hmm. that is not the reflection. So the point is oh, bringing together all this rate from the economic recession, from the uh, uh, jobless rate, out of school children, you know, and then the poverty in the land. Our economy has always been around, you know, the 10 naira, the 20 naira that goes between the, the mama pots, you know, the people that sell food on the street and what have you. But today, we don't see that happen. And then COVID-19 is really hitting us very, very hard. So these are all the majors, actually. True. True. Now, lo lo looking at, we, we all know, say, okay, the, the, um, the, 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 the cost of running government for Nigeria, they very, very high. Or I, I believe, say, the, the, the laws or the constitution backing this thing, don't they there from time? Not be now, this one they happen. And uh, the situation don't reach as it be. Seeing that uh, this, um, this report being come outside, they rate, uh, they rate Nigeria the second most corrupt nation in West Africa, being the second most corrupt nation in West Africa from all these things where they don't see. And the government notes them as, uh, as, as reason to, or, or they, they, they don't agree to the conversation. Now, moving forward, you feel, say, um, it, it, is, it, is, it is like a, a shining, is a light where governments suppose even look into to say, okay, we don't even check them by ourselves. If people with the international bodies we see us like this, which means say this thing will hinder our um, <laughs> international um, market, because they go look at them and say, you know, if you do business with Nigeria, based on the fact, say, this kind of reports don't come out. Which if you say um, governments suppose even do? Since say this kind of report come out in the first place, aside the fact say the counter arm say you know correct and what do you feel say government supposed to do as they take uh, get this kind of results? You know, one of the first things I would say is government should do need assessment. Okay. Understand what is really happening. Why are we getting this kind of report? Okay. You know, before before going further on answering your question, I need you to understand one thing. No investor will think of coming to Nigeria as it is now to invest. One of the first things he will think around or she will think around is insecurity. Okay. The second thing is, when we come to insecurity is, like, you'll be thinking, my, my properties will be looted. Yeah. I will be kidnapped. Mm -hmm. or, or government policy will affect one of the things I am doing. Look at the story of Gokada in Lagos. So, so if you keep that aside, then think around, is, is government doing need assessment or making simple research to understand whether this report is real, is the reflection of what really happens? So the first thing government need to do is look at the recommendation of Transparency International and then run and for, for it to give them the reflection of what is happening in the country. And yeah. that will go a long way in helping us in the ranking system. Interesting. All right, then. 
Um, of course, okay, now we'll be saying we don't already discuss this matter. We don't already look, we don't understand what in the Transportation International they look. Uh, we don't also understand uh, government position, position um, on this particular matter. Maybe we just get, maybe we make this a little bit um, solution driven um, to start with. We don't say corruption now don't enter deep. Um, person go talk and say nobody might not be corrupt for Nigeria. As it be. There's no level mm -hmm. where you enter. I mean, NIMC don't show us waiting day now. Say upon say people, they shout, 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 shout. Uh, bless the government, just carry here, put one corner. Waiting we get now frown mm. uh, on top of the matter. Frown at uh, we see the hope to see prosecution and what not. Okay, yeah. make we look at. If we decide today, say, okay, we won't really take this corruption matter seriously. If you, imagine, say, um, na, na, na people in the government, now you, they look right now. Where you go tell them, say, may they start from? Now, the institutions we're supposed to put in place first, or we need to they pass a different message across to the people. I mean, where this thing they come up from? I'd be like, say, once person enter government, then go just bad. You know, they start from one person they outside government. What are we supposed to put in place? Now, the institutions, we're going to nip them in the bud, or we suppose they sit down now, they give fresh lecture to um, orientate uh, Nigerians. What will be your take? My take on this is one of the first things we need to look around is integral human development. Okay. And then optimal institutional performance. Okay. We need to build around our integral human development. How? Now, this is it. There is five cardinal points of every government that is transparent and accountable. And I will list them. Credibility, mm -hmm. legitimacy, accountability, service, and power. Now, we must build credi a, a credible system of government that will give us a legitimate point of view when it comes to governance and allow citizens and people to hold us accountable as government so that we will provide effective service. And while we are providing service, we build trust between citizens and people so that we will have power. And that power is subclassified into two. Power with and power over. So we should, we should understand that we are governing people with power with, allowing people to have their own power within them, and then we as government or the people in government to understand that everybody cannot be in government. That is why we entrust them to send them to represent us. So they are answerable to us the way we are answerable to them because we pay tax and then we want institution to be strengthened. Yeah. So when we build that integral human development and then optimal institutional performance, things will move well. And then information should not be hidden from the public. Public matters should be addressed in a public way. Private matters should be addressed in a private way. So there should not be misinformation or allow fake news to thrive. Because fake news will not thrive when the real news is there. Mm -hmm. Then if we build on this, I think our system will be strengthened. And then back to us citizens, mm -hmm. we should think around that. You know, one of the major things that has been affecting us is nepotism, you know, religion, sentiment, and what have you. We should know that there is no a, 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 a Christian a, 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 a this or governor this. If a president is a Muslim, it's not that he is ruling the government or as a Muslim. No, he is just a, a Muslim in his own way. So he should go and do his own religion and then allow him to practice his own religion but not bringing his religion to the system of governance. Mm. So we should believe that Someone that is good, vote for him for his goodness so that we will have Nigeria move to another point of uh, 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 level or, or the good level. Mm -hmm. I think that is what we need. Okay. Trust. Mm -hmm. We must build that trust between government and people and people 
and government. government. Well, thank you very much. Makes I got sense. Mokta Halilu Mudibo. Um, I don't want to say take on top of this segment. You really don't break him down as he supposed to be. Um, thank you so much for your time. Have a fantastic Thursday uh, morning.